स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello everyone this is Dr Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing we were discussing about the living organisms and in that context in this particular module we are discussing about the classification of the living organisms and so far what we have discussed we have discussed about the uh, classifications of the animals and in the previous lecture we discussed about the classification of the invertebrate animals and in that we have discussed about the properties of the porifera cilentrata we have discussed about the properties of the platyhelminthes and the askehelminthes apart from that we have also discussed about the some of the exclusive properties of the phylum mollusca and echinodermata and uh, then very briefly we discussed uh, about the the uh, properties of the hemichordata so so far what we have discussed are the organisms which are actually been falling into the category of invertebrate and we have discussed about the hemichordata which is found to be a connecting link between the chordata and the non chordata so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the chordata and uh, we are going to discuss uh, the different uh, 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 different uh, sub phylums and the divisions what are present in the phylum chordata so let's start our discussion about the phylum chordata so uh, as the name suggests the chordata means the organisms which are actually going to have the notochord right so the phylum chordata is actually the organisms which are actually going to have the uh, cartilaginous uh, notochord at least in some phase of their life cycle if they don't have the uh, well developed notochord in the adults at least they will uh, going to show the some notochord in the early stage of the embryonic life cycle and all those organisms are actually going to be present in the phylum chordata apart from that the chordatas are actually going to have the gill slits in the pharyngeal region so this pharyngeal region is the region which is required for the respirations then they are actually going to have the hollow dorsal uh, nerves cord running throughout the body right so they are going to have the nerve cords which runs from the throughout the body and that's how it actually going to regulate the activities within the whole body or it is actually going to work as a sensory organs so that it will be actually going to sense all the activities what are happening within the body then the animals which have the notochord but do not have the vertebral column are called as the invertebrate chordates okay uh, these invertebrate chordates are the link between the non chordata and the vertebrata so within the chordata you have the different types of uh, animals one of the animal which actually going to have the vertebral columns are called as the vertebrata whereas the animals which actually have a notochord but do not have the vertebral columns are called as the invertebrate chordates and invertebrate chordates are found are Uh, supposed to be a connecting link between the non chordata and the vertebrata what is the difference between the chordata and the non chordata so we have listed out the some of the classical differences between the uh, chordata and the non chordata so these are the list for the chordata and these are the properties of the non chordata 
So in the core data, you are going to have the node record which is present. In the case of non-core data, node record is completely absent. Uh, in the core data, the central nervous system is dorsal and it is hollow and single, which means there will be a single dorsal nerves which are actually going to run throughout the animal. Whereas in the case of non-core data, the central nervous system is ventral, solid and double, right? Then the pharynx performed by the gill slit, uh, pharynx are perforated by the gill slits whereas the gill slits are completely absent in the case of non-core data. The heart is ventral and the heart is dorsal. If it is present, it is going to be a dorsal. Whereas the tail is present in the case of the core data, whereas the tail is not present in the case of non-core data. So with this uh, very, uh, you know, few uh, classical differences between the core data and non-core data, let's move on and discuss about the classification of the core data. So, the so core data is a very big uh, uh, phylum. The core data is being further divided into the three sub-phylums. These are the euro core data, cephalo core data and the vertebrata. Cephalo core data and the Eurocore data are considered to be protocore data, which means they are not going to have the well developed system. So, let's first discuss about the subphylum Eurocore data and then we are going to discuss about the subphylum Cephalocore data. So, subphylum Eurocore data, these animals are called as tunicates, okay. The body is covered by a covering called as test, which is made up of, of the cellulose called the tunicine. So this is, see, you have uh, the some, one of the tunicates where you have the cell body, which is covered by the test and uh, it is made up of, of the cellulose, which is called as tunicine. The notochord is present only in the tail of the larva it is lost during the metamorphosis. So this is the class of example where the notochord is not present in the adult. It is only present very briefly in the tail of the larva and it is lost during the metamorphosis, which means when the larva is developing into the adult, the tail is actually going to lose. These are the exclusively marine animals. So they are not found in the fresh water. The pharynx has many gill slits. So pharynx has many gill slits, right? You see here that the, this is the pharynx where you have the uh, slits and these slits are being used for respirations. The examples are the herdamania, salpa and doliolum. So what you see here is one of the organism from the subphylum Eurocore data. Now let's move on to the another subphylum which is called as the cephalocore data. So phylum cephalocore data or sub phylum cephalocore data, these animals are called as the lancets. They are small fish like animal that are no longer than 5 centimeter in length. So they are fish like animals. You see there is a fish like streaming body where you have the initial shroud and the last part you have a tail. They live partly buried in soft marine soils. Okay. The notochord is present throughout the life and extend in length. So notochord is present, right? This is the notochord. What you see, this pink color thing is notochord and it is extended throughout the length of the organisms. They show the chordata characters such as the presence of pharyngeal glint slits, tail and the dorsal nervous system. So what you see here is you have a very well developed tail. Then you have the caudal fins and then it has a dorsal fin because these are animals like fish like animals. So, and then they have the gill slits. Gill slits are present in the pharyngeal cavity or pharynx uh, within the pharynx. And then it has a notochord which runs throughout the body. The examples are the bronchiostoma or the lens slits. Uh, this is the structure of the uh, bronchiostoma where you have the different types of uh, um, the part of the structures within right you have the well developed anus you have the ventral fins then you have the intestine then you have the dorsal fins nerve cords so nerve cord is the dorsal right in the case of the uh, bronchiostoma 
Now let's move on to the next subphylum. So the next subphylum is called as the subphylum vertebrata. And the sub subphylum vertebrata can be further divided because within the vertebrata you have the very huge number of uh, organisms. So subphylum vertebrata can be divided into the two divisions. Okay. So this is the subphylum, right? Subphylum vertebrata. Then uh, subphylum can be divided into divisions. So you have the two division. One is called as the agnatha, which is the organism which are not going to have the jaw. Then you have the uh, nathostomata. Nathostomatas are the organism which are going to have the jaw. And within the nathostomata, you have the superclass. So superclass is you have the two major superclass. The organism which are actually going to bear the fins, they are belonging to PCs. And the organism which are actually going to bear the limbs, they are being a present into the tetrapoda. So in the case of vertebrata, why they are called as vertebrata? Because the notochord is replaced by the cartilaginous or bony vertebral column in the adult. Thus, all the vertebrates are chordata, but not all chordatas are vertebrata, which means if the notochord is replaced by the cartilaginous or bony ventral column into the adult, then they are being called as the vertebrata. This means all the vertebratas are chordata, but not the all chordatas are vertebrata. Besides, the basic chordata characters, vertebrates have the ventral muscular heart with two three or four chambers so you can you will see when we are going to discuss about the classifications that the within the vertebrata you have the heart which can be two chambered three chambered or four chambered you have the well defined kidney for excretion and osmoregulations and a paired appendages which may be fin or the limbs which means it is going to have the paired appendages for the movement right either they are going to use that for swimming which is actually they are going to be in the fin in the case of the uh, fishes or they are going to have the limbs which are actually going to be present in the tetrapoda. So let's discuss about the classification of the vertebrata. So we are going to start first with the division agnatha which are the organism which does not contain the jaw. So subphylum vertebrata, subphylum vertebrata, what are the different uh, properties? The notochord is replaced by the vertical, vertical column. That's why they are called as the vertebrata. And the subphylum vertebrata is divided into two divisions. One is division agnatha. It includes the most primitive vertebrates without the jaw. It has one class which is called as the cyclostomata. Whereas the division uh, nathostomata, it includes the vertebrates with the jaw and it has the several classes which are grouped into two superclasses. Superclass 1 is called as species. These animals bear the fin for the swimming. Whereas the superclass tetrapoda, these animals have the four limbs for the locomotions. Now, discuss about the division agantha. So, division agantha, it includes the most primitive vertebrates without the jaw and within that you have the class cyclostomata. Cyclostomatas are jawless and eel-like animals. So, skin is soft, smooth, containing unicellular muscular glands but no scales. Uh, median fins are present but paired fins are absent. They are ectoparasite which have sucking and circular mouth without jaw. The endoskeleton is cartilaginous and the digestive system lacks the stomach. The stein is present with a fold called as the ticlosole. So this is an example uh, where you have the petroroman. So this is the fish, right? Fish-like uh, organism which do look like eel-like animals, right? So within uh, the uh, division agantha, you have a class which is called as the cyclostomata, where the respiration occurs by the 5 to 16 pairs of the gill slits. Uh, heart is present and heart is two chambered. The gonads is single and a large without the gonodacts and fertilization is external. The examples are petromozon, which is lamprey and the mexine, which is called as the hagfish. So this is what you see here. You have the 
uh, structure of the uh, organisms and it is going to have the all other different parts of the body. You have the gallbladder, esophagus, heart which is two chambered heart, then you have the uh, ear vesicles, gill slits. So, these are the gill slits what are present in the organisms. Then you have the oral hood, oral tentacles and so on. Now, let us talk about the vertebrata. So, we have discussed about the division agantha. Then we are going to now talk about the nethostomata where we have the two sub super class. One is called as species, the other one is called as the tetrapoda. So, division agnathomostomata uh, is super class species. These are the aquatic animals. They are poikilothermic or the cold blooded animals which means they are body temperature changes with the surrounding temperatures. You can have the two different types of animals which are called as cold blooded animal or the warm blooded animal. So, cold blooded animal will not be able to maintain the body temperature. So, they will actually going to their body temperature is going to change as per the environment or the external temperature. Whereas, the warm animals are actually going to maintain the temperature and they are going to spend a lot of energy for that right. Examples in this case is uh, fishes and all other uh, like fishes, the snake and the uh, amphibians whereas in the warm blood animals you can have the uh, mammals like the humans right. Uh, okay. They feed on the dendritous uh, material, planktons, algae, mollusk and the other aquatic animals. Locomotion is by the body scales and the fin. The caudal fin helps in steering. So, you can see always there is a fish always has a caudal fin and that helps in uh, you know movement right. It actually helps in deciding the directions. Then exoskeleton is made up of, of the dermal scales and the endoskeleton is either bony or the cartilaginous. Superclass species. The body is streamlined and the boat shape right. So, this is you see a typical fish right where the body is streamlined. So, it actually can you know helps the, uh, the fishes to swim very smoothly without actually experiencing lot of frictions. The mouth is terminal and ventral in positions. The respiration is by the gills. So, you will see that there is a gill slits and that gill slit is actually going to filter the water and during that process it is actually going to take up the water uh, oxygen from which is dissolved in the water. Heart is two chambered and it shows the single circulation which is the closed. So, heart is two chambered where you can have the one ventricle and one uh, auricle right and it is actually a single circulation which means uh, the, it will not going to be a double circulation system. Uh, which means the blood is going to come into the uh, heart and then it goes from the heart which means uh, it's not like it, blood is going to be filled into the heart and then it is actually going to go. So, it is actually a unidirectional single circulation system. The blood is red in color due to the red blood cells. The PCs have a well developed brain with a large olfactory lobes. The sexes are separate and the most fishes are oviparous and some are viviparous. Then we move on to the uh, uh, superclass species within that we have the two subclasses one is called as the chondrocytes and the other one is called as the osteocytes. So, the class chondrocytes exoskeleton chondrocytes or these are called as the cartilages fishes so cartilage fishes uh, other one is called as the bony fishes right so exoskeleton is made up of in the form of the cartilage they are mainly only marine the exoskeleton is made up of of the tiny pilacoid scales the mouth is ventral and there are two dorsal vents uh, male copulatory organ called claspers are present. The caudal fin is heterocircle or asymmetrical. 
five to seven pairs of gill slits are present and operculum is absent. The fertilization is internal and these fishes are viviparous. Examples are all the fishes what you know which are present in the marine, right? The shark, electric ray, stingray, hammerhead shark and the sawfish. So this is what you see here is actually a fish which is a cartilage fish and mostly these cartilage fishes are present in marine which means they are present in sea and uh, they are actually having the well developed uh, system right so they have the two chambered heart and the uh, caudal fin what you see is asymmetrical which means it's not like this it's it's not like this it's like a one side it is small the other side is small so it is actually asymmetrical then it has the dorsal fins it has the ventral fins and the pectoral fins uh, these fins allow the fish to swim into the into the water right and the caudal fin is actually being used to decide the direction then if you cut the fish you will see that it has a huge amount of the, all the different types of uh, the organs right has the heart then it has the uh, digestive system so what you see here is actually the elementary canal like this is the elementary canal what you see here and that's end up into the anus and then it also has the kidney which is like this right and then it also has the uh, forebrain so brain is well developed in the case of the uh, cartilage fishes then we have the another super class which is called as the class osteocytes and these osteocytes are also called as bony fishes because the uh, exoskeleton is made up of, of the bones these are found in the fresh water and the marine fish water the exoskeleton is made up of, of the cycloid or the cytonoid scales so what you see here is actually so you have seen right uh, uh, these scales are present onto the fish right which we actually draw like this right so these scales could be of two different types as per the design it could be a cycloid scale which is actually going to have us you know this kind of structure or it could be cytonoid scale which is of this kind so uh, mouth is terminal in positions right and the single dorsal fin is present which means the single dorsal fin and you see it is symmetrical in shape right uh, then it has a claspers claspers are absent so mouth uh, so male sex organ the claspers are absent in the case of the uh, bony fishes then caudal fin is symmetrical right caudal fin is symmetrical then it has four pairs of gill slits and are prevented covered by an operculum so you have the gill slits and the fertilization is external and these fishes are oviparous. So you see the many examples of these fishes. You have the Bombay duck, pompret, catla, seahorse and all that. So what you see here is the many fishes like the mandarin fish, you have the seahorse, you have the angel fish, uh, labio rohita, the rohu, like the main fish what we eat in our homes and then we have the flying fishes then we have the anabas or the climbing perches and so on and uh, as far as the internal anatomy is concerned they are also be very de well developed so it's, you see that they have a well developed uh, uh, the digestive system then they have the well developed sex organs and the, you, this is the digestive system where you have the interior, you have the mouth and then it enters into this is the stomach and then it ends up into the anus. Then it has the urinary bladders and the other kinds of things. Now let's move on to the next class and the next super class is the tetrapoda. So tetrapodas are the, are the animals which are actually going to have the four limbs. Uh, two uh, four limbs and the two hind limbs. Tetrapoda can be further divided into the many subclasses like the uh, class like the uh, amphibia, reptilia, avies and the mammals. So within the nathostomata you have the superclass tetrapoda. These animals bears the two pairs of limb or the appendages 
animals like the snakes are limbless and the super class tetrapoda include the four classes like the amphibia, reptilia, aves and the mammals. So let us start first the discussion about the amphibia. So class amphibia are the organism which actually can stay on to the two places. It can be terrestrial which means they can be stay on to the uh, onto the land right so they can be terrestrial or they can be aquatic so, and that's why they are called as the amphibia so these animals lives onto the land as well as the water they are poikilothermic animals and they are carnivorous the body is divided into the head trunk and the tail so what you see here is actually this is the head this is the trunk and this is the tail at the back side you have a tail uh, in some cases, you are actually the tail is absent, right? Then you have the two pairs of limb which arises from the pelvic girdle and there are two pairs of limbs which are actually arises from the pectoral girdle. So, so these are the fore limbs and these are the hind limbs. In frogs, the webs are present between the digits which help to swim. So you have seen the frog, right? You have seen the frog, uh, it has the uh, webs like structure into the between the digits and that actually helps the frog to swim into the water. The skin is moist granular with the mucous membrane. So in the case of the frog what you see here is the skin is very soft and it's slimy actually and that helps in the frog in terms of getting the uh, protection from the prey and it is also helpful in terms of the frogs, uh, you know, the skin is uh, not been getting damaged by the water also. They are uh, having the prominent eardrums or the tympanic membranes are present in the head. The examples are frog, toad and salamanders. In the class amphibia, the intestine and the digestive glands are well developed. So this is what you see here is the digestive glands where you have the uh, all the organs like you have the liver, you have the oesophagus, you have the stomach and then you have the uh, gallbladders, then you have the all other organs. So this is what the internal structure of the frog. What you see here is it has, they have the well developed lungs for the respirations. Then they have the fat bodies. These fat bodies are actually being uh, very very good because the frogs are going for the hibernations and during that hibernation these fat bodies are being used for the uh, you know for supplying the energy because they can be utilized for uh, metabolism and that's how they can be utilized for the uh, during the hibernations then it ha they have the well developed uh, uh, heart right so circulatory system is of closed type and heart is three chambered and the ventral. RBCs are biconcase and they are nucleated. So they do actually the RBCs are nucleated which means they are actually containing a nucleus. Remember that in all other organisms like the humans the organism the, the RBCs do not have the nucleus. Respiration is by skin lungs and the buccopharynx uh, which means the skin is soft and the slimy and because of that it actually helps the frogs to uh, get the uh, air from the or get the oxygen from the atmosphere. Apart from that it has a well developed lungs and the buccopharynx so it actually can take up the it can do the respiration from the three sources one it can actually respire through the skins it can res then it can take up the oxygen through mouth and then it also can take up the oxygen through the lungs. Nervous system is well developed. It has a well developed brain which uh, and the other central nervous system. The sexes are separate. These are oviparous. The fertilization is external. This means they are actually going to give the eggs. Development occurs in water and it is indirect which means there will be a metamorphosis. So what you see here is actually the life cycle of the frog where the adult frog after the fertilization is uh, the adult frog is actually going to give up the egg and then these eggs are actually going to be fertilized with the sperm from the male frogs 
and then that will develop into the embryo. That embryo will actually be developed into the tadpoles. These tadpoles then actually will stick to the uh, water, uh, the you know, plants within the uh, pond or the water, and then they will eventually going to grow, and then they will develop. Right. So initially they will be uh, in baby tadpole, and then the tadpole is actually going to develop. So you see initially they are actually having the tail and then as as they will go through with the developmental process the tail is actually going to regress and it's actually going to develop into the adult frog. This tail whatever the material is present in the tail is actually being used uh, for a source of nutrition during the last phase of the metamorphosis and that's how it is actually going to lose the tail. Now let us move on to the another uh, subclass which is called as the reptilia. So reptilia are the you know all the animals which are like snake and the crocodile and all the kind of things. So these are the crawling animals like the cobra, crocodiles and turtle which means they crawl from one part, part of one part to another part. They could be tetrapoda which means they will going to have the well developed uh, limbs right or they could actually slide okay just like you know uh, snakes they are the first two terrestrial vertebrates few may be aquatic or the semi aquatic found in the marshy land so these are the first animals which were ter completely terrestrial compared to that right you might have seen that when the, we were talking about the amphibians they were semi terrestrial like they can actually go into the water or they can be remain on the terrestrial but these animals are uh, true terrestrial because they were remain on to the land and some of the uh, these uh, reptilia animals are also found in the uh, water as well. Uh, most of these animals are carnivora which means they are actually going to take up the nutrition from the other animals. Uh, their locomotion is by the limb which may have de well developed pentadactyly digits and claws which help the animal to creep or to the crawl. Reptiles are the poikilothermus, so this means they are also the cold blooded animals. Skin is dry, non granular and covered by the epidermal scales, scutes or the plates. So these are the some of the example what you see this is the snake, this is the turtle, uh, this is the uh, you know the, this is the crocodile and this is the lizard right. The class reptilia, the heart is incompletely four chambered and ventral and the circulatory system is of closed type. Only the crocodile has the exception that it has a four chambered heart. So you see how the heart is actually being developed while the animals were going from the evolution. So in the fish you have the two chambered heart but these two chambered hearts are continuous which means the blood comes from one side and then it goes on to the other side. There is no circulations actually. Compared to that the amphibians, so this is the two chambered heart. Then compared to that the amphibians, they have the three chambered heart. And then in the reptilia, it has the three prime heart which means it is actually having a three chambered heart but the one of the chamber is also partially being uh, chambered. So it is partially four chambered heart then that get converted into a four chambered heart in the bird as well as the mammal. So mammal is also having the four chambered heart. The eardrum is depressed which means there is a no ear, eardrum. The respiration is through lungs. The brain is well developed. The olfactory lobes and cerebellum are better developed than the amphibians. Sexes are separate and show the prominent sexual dimorphisms. Fertilization is internal, reptiles are oviparous, they lay eggs and show the parental care. So this is what it is showing here. So the, uh, the adult uh, snake is actually giving the eggs and then these eggs are getting fertilized and then these fertilized eggs are actually giving the BB snake which are actually being developed into the adult snakes. Then we are talking about the class AVs. 
so it includes the flightless birds and as well as the flying bird which means it includes the birds which could fly or which could not be able to fly for example the flightless bird which means ostrich and the uh, flying bird like all the domestic uh, uh, birds what we see right four limbs are modified into the wings for the flying hind limbs are used for walking or to the running aquatic birds have web like toes so this is what you see here right so aquatic birds have the web like structure right web like membrane this is present in the uh, duck right and uh, the body is differentiated into the head neck trunk and the tail so what you see here is this is the head then trunk and then you have the neck here right and this is your tail right they are homeothermous which means they are the warm bed animal because the birds are actually going to maintain a constant temperature the exoskeleton is made up of of the feathers so this is what is a typical bird right where you have the beak, you have the uh, neck, you have the trunk and you have the back and then you have the wings, right? Uh, the scales are present onto the hind limbs, skin is thin, dry and non-granular, bones are hollow, jaw form the beak and teeth are absent, so they, they have the jaw but the teeth are absent. Special organs such as crop and gizzards are present. So crops and gizzards are actually the organ which are actually been helping in the digestive system. The blood is red due to the RBCs which are biconcave and biconvex and the nucleated. Heart is ventral in position and it is four chambered heart showing the double circulation. Respiration is by the lungs having the air sac for the biopsy. So what you see here is a comparison between the bones, between the uh, human bones and the uh, bird's bone, right? And the human bones are actually solid, so they are not having a uh, air pockets, whereas in the bird's bones, they are actually having the air pocket. And because of that, the bird's bone are light. And because they are light, they can be able to help in terms of giving the low weight. And because of that, the birds can be able to uh, uh, fly. So brain is enlarged with the well-developed cerebellum. Optic lobes are well-developed. Olfactory lobes are poorly developed. It's a unisexual cellular dimorphism. It's a oviparous and the internal fertilizations. Birds lay egg with the yolk and albumin. Birds are very good in terms of building the nest onto the tree or you know home also. You might have seen that the, there are birds are which, which are actually forming the different types of bird, right? Different types of birds are different types of nests. You might have seen the very beautiful bird, nest from the many types of bird which we see in our homes, right? Most are the herbivorous and some are actually are carnivorous. Parental care is well seen along with the seasonal migrations. You might have seen the migratory bird in our campus. Anyway, we could see a lot of migratory birds which are coming from the other parts of the uh, world, right? During the winter, right? Urinary bladder is absent and the females show only the presence of left ovary and oviduct to reduce the body weight during the flight. So, what you see here is a life cycle of a typical bird. So this is the life cycle where you are adult chickens are actually going to give the eggs. Then these eggs are actually going to be, these are the fertilized eggs because as I said, you know, the fertilization is uh, internal, right? So this means the eggs what you get from the adult chicken are actually the fertilized eggs. And then these fertilized eggs are actually being uh, be present outside and then it is going to be incubated for some time at 37 degrees Celsius and then the the embryo is actually going to be hatched from the uh, from the egg and then this ha hatched egg uh, chicken is actually going to develop into the well-developed adult chickens. Now let's move on to the next class and next class is called as the mammalia. 
see the, these gland mammary glands are present for the nutrition of the young ones so these are the unique class of animals which actually contains the uh, you know the mammary glands for giving the nutrition to their young ones mammals are terrestrial aquatic aerial and arboreal which means they are present what is terrestrial what they are present on to the land aquatic which means they are present on to the water aerial which means they are present in air right and arboreal which means they are present on to the tree which means the mammalian is a class of animals which are actually uh, you know go, uh, spreading in all part uh, all other uh, areas right it's, they are present on lands water air and tea and they are actually been most developed animals so they are actually capturing these um, places with their skills most are herbivoras few are carnivoras and some are on omnivoras so herbivora means they are actually eating the vegetables carnivora which means they are eating the meat and omnivora which means they are actually eating the vegetable as well as the meat human are omnivora whereas lion is carnivora and the uh, some other like cows are herbivoras locomotion is by the limbs body is divided into the head neck trunk and tails they are homeothermous which means they are warm blooded animals right they are warm blooded animals and uh, exoskeleton is in the form of skin hair fur nail and the hooves so what you see here is a structure of the rabbit and i'm sure you might have seen the rabbit right so it has a for head then it has a trunk and all those kind of things and it has a well developed tail also then the skin is granular having the sweat gland and the sebaceous gland body cavity is divided into two part it has a thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity by a diaphragm the mammals show the presence of an external ears teeth are different types you can have the incisors you have the canines you have the molars and you have the premolars heart is completely cha four chambered with with a uh, double circulations which means from the two chamber it is actually going to receive the blood and it from the two chamber it is actually going to supply the heart and that is called as the four chamber heart uh, with a double circulations RBCs are biconcave and they are without nucleus except there is an exception that in the camel there is a uh, nucleated RBCs. Blood is uh, red in color and the respiration is by the lungs. So this is what you see here is a circulatory system, right? Then in the class mammals, the brain is highly developed. Cerebrum shows the transverse band called as the carpus callosum. The optic lobes are better developed and the olfactory lobes. Few mammals are oviparous such as duckbill platypus. So these are the primitive mammals. So that's why they are actually oviparous. Uh, some mammals have the pouches for the development of young ones. These mammals are called as the marsupials. For example, the kangaroos, right? You know that you might have seen the kangaroos that how they are actually protecting their uh, you know young ones by keeping them into a uh, skin made uh, pouches right the most mammals are placental and the oviparous so so far what we have discussed we have discussed about the classifications of the animals we have what we have discussed we have initially started with the uh, very simple uh, you know classifications where we said that if the level of organization is cellular and the symmetry is mostly asymmetrical and the body cavity is acylomate then the phylum is going to be porifera so there there are different criteria which we have discussed in the beginning and based on those criteria the whole animal kingdom is being divided and uh, ultimately we have also discussed about the chordata and within the chordata we have discussed about the subphylum urochordata subphylum cephalochordata and then we have discussed about the subphylum vertebrata and within the vertebrata also we have discussed about the agnotha or the jaw lack the, the animals which do not contain the jaw or the thostomata the, the animals which are actually containing the jaw and within that also we have the 
super classes like DPCs or the tetrapoda and then we have also discussed about the different characteristic of the animals which are present within the tetrapoda whether it is the amphibians, reptilia, aves or the mammals. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture we are again going to take the example of the plants and how we can be able to use that to explain you how the classification of the animal is actually uh, how the classification of the organisms are actually being done. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.